Hi, I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf and welcome to my podcast, Cleaning Up the Mental Mess. In today's podcast, I'm going to be talking about love, sex, relationships and our brain, specifically how intimate relationships can actually help improve our telomeres, which are the ends of chromosomes. So you may have heard me talking about this quite often. I've done research on this and I recently interviewed Dr. Elisa Eppel, who's one of the leaders in the world when it comes to research on telomeres and stress, chronic, chronic stress. And so basically, you've got your chromosomes and your chromosomes look like little X's and where you see my nails, those would be considered telomeres. So I'm just you know using this analogy. So it's the ends of a, of a chromosome and they basically protect the chromosome. And what they do is as the, as the cell divides, so the, so the telomeres um, are involved in that process and then they shorten and then regrow and they shorten and regrow and, and all kinds of factors are involved like telomerase, which is an enzyme to help that process. And it's a whole complicated biochemical process. But what the research is showing is that chronic unmanaged stress, which is long-term toxic unmanaged stress, is affects how our telomeres, the length and the health of our telomeres, and that works with our immune system and it works with the mitochondria, which are the powerhouses of the cell, and all together with a bunch of other biochemist, biochemical reactions in the brain and the body, and that then influences and increases or decreases our vulnerability to aging in terms of biological age, in terms of cellular health. So the weaker, or weaker and shorter our telomeres are, then the quality of the telomeres is suffering and therefore the quality of our cells and our cell replication and therefore our organs and our bodies also suffer. The age of your body is called your biological age and your biological age is determined by the health of your cells and your health of your cells, a big contributing factor is how effectively the telomeres are working, how effectively the telomeres are working with the mitochondria, which are the powerhouses of the cell and this whole complex relationship. So what we basically see, and I saw this in my research as well, is that when people have got chronic unmanaged toxic stress, that can affect the the rate at which a telomere will shorten and get weaker. And then that impacts on the quality of one's biological age. And then we, our body can actually get older than our chronological age, than our actual age. Now that can be reversed as we learn to manage our chronic, as you learn to manage chronic toxic stress. And this cleaning up your mental messes podcast, pretty much everything I teach you on here is related to mind management and therefore helping you to understand and manage chronic toxic stress from all sources of events in life, traumas, et cetera, et cetera. So today I specifically want to talk though about how love, consensual safe sex and relationships affect telomeres because really interesting research. In fact, when I was interviewing Dr. Elisa Eppel, who I would call the queen of telomeres, her and Elizabeth Blackburn, they have done an extensive amount of research, as I mentioned, on telomere research. In fact, Elizabeth Blackburn won the Nobel Prize, first Australian woman to have won the Nobel Prize on her work on telomerase and telomeres. So that's really exciting. So when I was talking to her, she actually commented that her most viral study, now Dr. Lisa Apple and her team have produced a lot of publications, and she said her most viral study of, of publication of all her publications was one that was on basically how sexual relationships influences telomere length. So the exact title was Sexual Intimacy is Associated with Longer Telomere Length. And so I wanted to just talk about that and I put the link in the show notes so that you can go and have a look at the study. It's a great study. And basically what it says is that high quality intimate relationships are very, very good for health. So overarching this podcast and, and this specific podcast is trying to help to improve the, your, the quality and intimacy of your relationships to help with your biological and physical health, which feeds back into your mental health. So good relationships are really important. So we all know high quality, intimate relationships are good for health. We all, we all know that, okay? So basically what the study found was that women who reported having consensual safe sex with their partner during the course of the week tended to have significantly longer telomeres. Now other researchers have also found that frequent safe consensual sexual intimacy for individuals in relationships has been linked to greater mental and physical health outcomes such as more general happiness and greater life satisfaction lower daily somatic symptoms, that's bodily symptoms, 
reduced daily diurnal cortisol, that's reduced cortisol levels, and a more robust immune response. So we see that when telomeres are in a healthier state, have a, a, a quality-wise are better, we see a better immune response, better control of the HPA axis, which is your cortisol, where one of those is the cortisol response, ba- feeling better in your body, your heart rate variability improves, so a lot of other things, but also telomere length. So Dr. Eppel discusses a lot in her work and her team about this and how telomeres are very, very correlated with how supported we feel. So that's key here is how supported you feel. And so sexual intimacy, consensual safe sexual intimacy has a lot to do with how safe you feel in a relationship and how supported you feel in a relationship. And the more supported and safe you feel in that relationship, the more you actually lengthen your telomeres and improving the quality of your telomeres and all those other effects that I spoke about in terms of mitochondrial functioning and immune system and so on. So what they found was that couples who have been married for long periods of time or partnerships that have been going on for long periods of time where they feel safe and supported, they tell it was, it's correlated with healthier, longer telomeres. So healthy relationships help to predict positive stress and increased longevity because telomeres have a lot to do with longevity, which makes sense because you are aging regardless, you're getting older, every day you're getting older and your telomeres have a limited lifespan. Just, I'm just going to take the telomere concept. And so your telomeres are going to inevitably shorten as you eventually get to the point where you die. But what this research is showing is that the rate at which those telomeres shorten and kind of wear out, you can, short, you can change that rate at which it happens. And so you don't ha- it doesn't have to happen. It can be too fast so people age early or you can control, you can actually influence that through mind management and you can then increase the, the, increase the, the quality time of healthy telomeres. And we often you know, hear people saying things like, oh my gosh, a terrible incident happened, whatever, and they look like they've really aged. Or you may even feel, gosh, I've gone through so much, I really look older. You know, that sudden aging, uh, the way people look different when they've been through a lot of maybe illness or very traumatic situations going on in their life. I know that in some of the countries I've traveled in where I've seen where, where these very, very strained environments, people look much older than they are at much younger ages. You know, so our external strain, the environment that we're experiencing is processed by our minds and does have this effect. So this particular podcast, I wanted to really focus on the importance of safe consensual sex and in intimate relationships where people feel safe and supported. And there's direct evidence showing us that when we work towards these kinds of relationships, we can improve and increase our telomere health, which is great, which means our biological health. So we very, we also very, you know, we affect each other. So we know in a relationship, if one partner's really upset, it's like this emotional contagion. We, the other person can get really upset and, you know, we, we feel each other's emotions and not just in an intimate relationship, but in family relationships, in friends at work, there is, we do affect each other. And so it's really important that we focus on understanding that this is not just how I feel isn't just going to affect me, but a dark mood or a, you know, something I'm going through that I don't talk about and sort out with my partner, that's also affecting my partner. So the unspoken stuff that's not dealt with is going to affect our telomeres as well. Okay, so here are just a couple of things that you can do to help you to get healthier, to to get healthier telomeres, to improve the intimacy of your relationships, to deepen the support of safety feeling around relationships that leads to safe, supportive, consensual, sexual, intimate relationships. So the first one is that if you feel like you see need something more, and this is not just sexually more, this, this can apply on a sexual level and just in your relationship in general, is how do you tell your partner that you need something more? So what in order to answer that question we need a very open line of communication so in supportive relationships one of the things that the research shows is that an open line of communication is very key in these safe supportive inter, um, in relationships and that an open line of communication will help with the telomere length for example and help with all those other biological effects so it's one of so what does a safe intimate supportive relationship look like one of the things is an open line of communication. I can't keep stressing the word safe enough because we need, in order for an open line of communication, you 
both people in the relationship need to feel that they can talk safely. And yet it doesn't mean that you're not going to have arguments, but you feel, need to feel safe enough to have the argument, to get mad and maybe you know, walk away from a situation for a while that you can calm down, but to know that there's enough love and support that you can come back together again and resolve that relationship. So an open line of communication is important and on a regular basis. So this means you should be trying to talk constantly about everything from the little to the big stuff. If you don't practice open communication on a regular basis, when you do need it, it's difficult. So even if you haven't had anything major going on in the day, just make sure that you spend some time every single day connecting in an open line of communication. And yes, it could just be how was your day and how did that feel and what happened and you know, what's your opinion and listening and saying and telling how you felt about something. Or maybe it was a little minor argument. Maybe it was a big argument. Maybe it was not even an argument. It was just sharing. I had this conversation with someone today and this really made me feel like so frustrated and having the open line of communication that you felt that you could share that safely and not get judged or get corrected or get, you know, ignored, that kind of thing. So it's regular open lines of communication. Then the next thing is when you want to confront your partner, make sure you have thought about what you're going to say. And I really am speaking to myself here because sometimes we can get into situations where it, it happens in the moment and we re react and we want to, you know, we don't think about what we're saying clearly enough. We just say from a, you know, from a reaction, we say from that emotional overflow, that emotional spilling, which can be the wrong words as we all have experienced. So if you want to confront a partner about something, and it's not, and let's say an in the moment explosion has happened and you need to go away and come back and confront the partner or there's been a series of things, whatever the reason is, you decide, okay, I do need to have a bit more of a confrontational discussion. This is not going to be very comfortable. First of all, you've got to be comfortable with the uncomfortable because you're different people. So there's going to be these conflicts and we mustn't run from them. We must embrace them because that's how we're going to grow through. It's not bad to have conflict. And in fact, if there's absolutely no conflict, then one of you is not being truthful in who you are because the differences of opinion are good and to be valued. And it's okay to have arguments and, and differences of opinion as long as you're not being nasty to each other. So when you decide, okay, something has happened and you do need to confront your partner because it is an issue, make sure you've thought about what you want to say. Maybe even write it down, do a neurocycle. Say, okay, this is the issue. Get all the signals, gather awareness of the signals, Reflect on why, the who, the what, the when, where, the why. Write that down in the Metacog. Recheck it. Look at the whole process and work out your active reach, which is the actual statement, so that you've gone through that process of directing your neuroplasticity, wiring in an answer. And when you go into that confrontation, you've got the words and you've got all the emotions pretty much dealt with and you're prepared for if they say this, then that. If they say this, then I'll, I'll react like that. Because we can pretty much guess if we know our partners well enough to a certain 70-30% accuracy rate, we can predict kind of the response. So instead of being taken off guard and getting angrier, we can actually go in more prepared. And when you want to explode back because you've been triggered by something that keeps happening, you can, you've got your response to deal with. And then you can say, okay, well, I didn't respond. You know, you, you, you say the response that's calming. And then if your partner's still exploding, that could be another issue. Don't bring that issue into this issue. Don't mix issues. Just overlook that for the moment, but make a mental note that that's something you may need to discuss in a later confrontation with this open line of communication. If you've set up the open line of communication regularly, these confrontations don't have to be all massive. There'll be lots of maybe little confrontations in, and more positive type confrontations because you're used to communicating and listening to each other because it's not not big, huge, unmanageable things because you hardly ever do them, okay? So just really make sure you've thought it through. Try to stay calm. You know, have a breathing technique that breathe in for three, out for seven is an invaluable way of calming down. Like if someone's going off and exploding, you can be listening, deadpan face, calm face, make sure it looks like you are listening so they feel heard. And while they're talking, instead of you jumping in, and I'm speaking to myself here, you know, breathe in for three, and out for seven. Do that six to nine times, which is a minute to a minute and a half. And you would have calmed down your neurophysiology. You haven't reacted. You haven't added fuel to the fire, which is generating more electromagnetic energy that builds with these. And, you know, the fire lights and all this energy is 
between you just gets worse. There's a level of calmness, and if that person's still not worked, it's still worked up, and you still can't get your words through, say, okay, let's create mental space. Let's come back and deal with this later when we are both calmer, okay? If you raise your voice or get aggressive, it's only going to get worse. I know you know this. I'm just reminding you of what you know and giving you some techniques to practice. I don't think we can hear this often enough. And so that's why I just want to make this super simple. And I'm going to summarize these four little steps at the end. Okay, then ask them if you can talk to them about something. So open line of communication on a regular basis. When you need to confront your partner about something, make sure that you have thought about it by using the neurocycle in the way that I've described. Use the breathing technique to stay calm and don't raise your voice or get aggressive. If you do, rather walk away. Third thing, ask them. Then you do all that preparation, okay? Then you're going to ask them if you can talk to them about something. If you see that they're super busy, it's not a good time, they already worked up about something, respect that and find another time. Just say, hey, there's something I'd love to discuss. Can we talk about it? When will it suit you? You know, I know that's hard to do. It's all very nice to say it in a podcast and to hear it on a podcast. It's another thing to do it, but boy, is it worth it. I mean, all these things are going to contribute to a better relationship, that more intimate relationship. Think of your telomeres. Think of a weak telomere is going to feed back into your mental health and just make your relationship worse. So, you know, it's really worth it. You love each other. It's worth doing these things. Whatever you say might be hard for them to hear. Okay, so it might, and this goes the same way. They could, they, you know, this is a relation. This is not just you doing it. You, you want your partner to listen to this podcast too. So you're both doing this. Okay, so you're both aware of this. Not just one person becoming aware of these things. I recommend both partners listen to this podcast so that you both have the same view. So whatever you might say might be hard for them to hear and hard for them to process, and they might react in anger or sadness. And you need to anticipate that and make sure that you've got, this is where the neurocycle to plan what you want to say will be really good. Once you've done the neurocycle to work out, you know, how you want to confront your partner, you may have to make sure you have a lot of active reaches that prepare and do another couple of neurocycles maybe to help work out, you know, if they're angry, I'm going to, you know, this is what I could potentially say. If I'm, if they're sad, this is what I could potentially say. So all the time you're very intentional about keeping an intimate safe space between you. Okay, so just keep reminding yourself as well that they're probably feeling really big emotions and are probably surprised about what you have to say. Okay, so big emotions have a, have a habit of getting distorted and pouring out of the glass, exploding all over the place, bleeding. Okay, and think of a wound bleeding. The wound is popped and you, know, you cut yourself and, 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 and blood comes out. Okay, but four things. You can also tell them, tell them you value what you have with them. But be assertive about your desire for something more that you don't feel happy about. So you value what you have. I value this relationship. I value it so much that I I have to talk about this because it's really upsetting me. And maybe it's affecting your sex life. I mean, these things that are unresolved are going to set up patterns in your mind that will affect a really good, healthy, consensual, safe sex life where you all feel safe and satisfied. And so it's it's really, you know, and think of the telomeres as well. So these are really worth dealing, you know, dealing with. So it's very important that you that you let them know that you value the relationship, that this is not because you want to fight. This is because you value, you intentionally want to resolve this issue because you love them and care for them so much. But this is how it's affecting you. And they've, but to you, you know, be assertive. It's affecting you. It's affecting your desire. It's affecting your needs, it's affecting how you're relating to them. You you think it's affecting your behavior towards them and you don't want to behave negatively towards them. So be assertive, give the reasons why, and that can help as well. Okay, it's very important to let them know that you, you know, what you don't feel happy about. And as I said, this goes for both partners. Okay, and then another thing that's really important in this is just learn to be with each other. And, you know, sometimes if the person says, you know, I, I can't deal with this now, I'm too tired or whatever. Maybe you just need to sit down next to your partner and let them do what they're doing and you do what you're doing and just be with each other. Just no talking, knowing that you're going to talk about it at some stage. You've said you need to talk about something. You've told them you value whatever at all, but you're not quite ready yet. Maybe just be with them, you know, just sit together. We don't always have to have sunshine, sparks, roses, whatever. We can just be with each other. Sit down, work next to each other, watch that movie with them and say, okay, I understand. You know, should we just watch a movie together or do you want to, you know, go for a walk or something? Just be with each other. Don't discuss anything deep for now. You can do it when you're ready. Sometimes we're just not ready yet, okay? So 
doing these things, I mean, just being with each other, just telling them you value them, just asking them if you can talk about something, just telling them you want to confront your partner, but working out how to do this in terms of the neuropsych. I'm just going back over these, keeping this open line of communication. These are going to improve your, the intimacy of your relationship. And as I said in the beginning, we are healthier with intimate relationships. So I'm going to be talking a bit more about this on the next podcast as well, but I hope you've enjoyed this. Let, give me some testimonies. Let me know how this has helped you and your partner. And I look forward to seeing you next time.